Hey, Tiff, I'm really sorry to trouble you with this. It's about today's shopping list. Could you please add some toilet paper if it's not too much trouble? Hey, Indigo, how's it going? Sure thing. Toilet paper. Got it. I'll bring some home with me. Oh, thanks a bunch. Did you already finish up at the supermarket? No, nope. I'm just about to grab my shopping cart, so we'll be good for any additions. Let me know if anything else comes to mind. Oh, cool. Sorry for springing these last-minute additions on you all the time. I swear, I have the memory of a goldfish lately. It's fine. I'm always remembering things at the last minute myself, or when it's way too late. I totally get it. Anyway, how are you feeling today, honey? Pretty good, actually. Thanks to you always being there to help me lately, I've been able to relax and take it easy a lot more than I had been doing, which is doing me wonders. On that note, I happen to be chilling on the sofa right now. So I'm not really up to much. And neither should you be. You're so pregnant, you're fit to burst at any moment. Rest and relaxation should be your number one priority right now, for both of your sakes. I know you went through a rough patch of headaches and nausea lately, so I want you to be careful not to overdo it. Chilling out and doing sweet F.A. on the couch is exactly what you need right now. Ugh, thanks so much, Tiff. You're the best sister-in-law in the world. You've done nothing but help me ever since I found out I was pregnant. I want you to know how much I appreciate you being there for me. Sorry for all the trouble, too. I know you have a life of your own to lead, so I can't help but feel a little guilty. Oh, don't be silly, sweetie. You don't have to feel guilty. You're pregnant with my brother's baby. This is the least that I can do. I don't think of it as trouble at all. Not even a little. Don't ever hold back if there's something you need or want because you think you're burdening me, okay? Because you're not. If we can't work together at times like this, what's family for? Oh, I'm so lucky you live as close by as you do. I was a little nervous about going through the pregnancy and living so far away from my parents. But with you here, it hasn't mattered at all. To tell you the truth, you're even more useful than my husband. Pleased to hear it. I think it's the best you don't tell him that, though. Don't get me wrong, I love my brother. He's got a big heart and he's kind, but he can be a little thick-headed sometimes. So I guess certain things just don't occur to him. Don't tell him I said that either. He'd get so mad if he could see this conversation. No kidding. <laughs> oh, he's been working so hard at the office lately to bring in extra baby funds. Truthfully, I'm lucky to have him, so I can't help but feel a tad guilty about agreeing with what you just said so much. I don't see any harm in it. You haven't been able to leave the house at all lately. It's only right you should be able to delight in idle complaints about your husband every now and then, and I'm always here to listen. Thanks, Tiff. Huh? What's this feeling in my stomach? What? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay, but oh, it just hurts a little. This is the weirdest feeling. The midwife said you're due to go into labor the day after tomorrow, right? Right. What should I do? Oh no, could these be contractions? Is this what they feel like? Contractions? Don't worry, sweetie, I'll be there ASAP. Hold tight. I'm so sorry about this, but I would really appreciate it if you came. I could be wrong, but I'd rather not take the risk. I understand completely. There's nothing more important than trusting your instincts at times like this. Try not to worry, okay? Take some deep breaths and relax while I'm on my way there. I won't be long. Okay, I will. Sorry again. I can't thank you enough. Hey, Indigo, I left those diapers you asked me for by the front door. Oh, you did? Thanks a bunch. I'll be in touch if I need anything else. Alright, got it. I know your life's probably all kinds of hectic right now, with having a newborn baby to look after and all, but it's been a while now. You had Elsa over two weeks ago. Right, she's about two weeks old now. What of it? Well, I was really hoping you might be ready to finally let me meet my little niece soon. I'm so excited to see her. Huh? I thought you saw her in the maternity ward. You already want to see her again? Well, I did, but it's hardly the same, is it? Even then, I only caught a brief glimpse of her through the glass. I saw her, but it's hard to say I've met her properly yet. Look, honey, I know how crazy, busy, and stressed you must be, and I don't want to be a nuisance. But I'd love to see if I could come over sometime when you're not so busy. I know how much you've got on your plate right now, so I'm happy to come whenever is good for you guys. I won't stay long, I promise. You seriously think I have that kind of free time? Right, of course you don't. I'm sorry. Forgive me, that was selfish of me. Uh, it's fine, I don't hold it against you. You don't have kids of your own. 
There's no way you could possibly understand how stressful and demanding the reality of looking after a newborn baby actually is. I mean, how could you? Right, of course. Okay, honey. Well, just let me know if there's anything else you need, okay? Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, Elsa wants a stroller. We didn't buy her one yet. Won't you be a darling and head to the baby store to buy her one? A stroller? Isn't it a bit early for that? Surely you won't need one for a little while. Oh, dear, what are you talking about? Your ignorance is rearing its ugly head again. There are all kinds of strollers, you know. There are ones made for one-month-old babies, too. Wow, I must say, Tiff, I'm astonished you didn't know that. I thought this was common knowledge. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. Okay, so just to confirm, you want a stroller suitable for babies, right? Yep, that's right. Thanks, Tiff. You really are such a darling. Actually, don't worry about trying to find one yourself. You'd probably only get the wrong type anyway. I'm gonna send you a bunch of links for ones I like soon. Check them out and arrange for one to be delivered to our house ASAP. Okay, I will. It's only natural that you wouldn't be as good as I am at choosing things for little Elsa, what with not having any kids of your own after all. If I left things like this down to your judgment, you'd probably end up making yourself look silly by buying the wrong thing and having to go through a load of pain-in-the-ass return procedures. Sorry, I'll make more effort to learn about this kind of thing. Yeah, I really think you should. You should be trying harder to learn about stuff like which items are suitable for what ages and what kinds of things are popular among new moms. Why don't you go buy some baby magazines? I don't remember if I mentioned this, but since you don't have any kids of your own, that's one of the best ways to learn your things. And look, Tiff, I hate to say this, but if you don't have at least a bare minimum of knowledge on the topic, I wouldn't feel comfortable letting you meet Elsa. You wouldn't? Oh, well, I guess I understand. I'm sure this would have been a lot easier for you if mine and Robert's parents were still around. They would have known exactly what to do and what kind of stuff to buy. Sorry you're stuck with me. I know I'm not much help. Mmm, I'm not so sure. Relations with in-laws are never easy, so even if your parents were still around, who's to say it'd be any different? Besides, my parents are going to be flying down from Wisconsin to meet her for the first time next month. There's really nothing to worry about. How about you spend less time fretting and more time learning about babies? You're right, fretting won't get me anywhere. I'm really pleased to hear your folks are coming over. Yeah, I'm really excited. But I need you to keep going shopping and cooking all of our meals for us, at least until they arrive. You'll do that, won't you, Tiff? Thanks. Anyway, I have to go check on Elsa now. Catch you later. Tiffany, did you say something to your brother again? He wouldn't get off my back about not letting you meet Elsa. It's been five weeks now. Let her see her niece already. <sighs> Is there something you'd like to tell me, Tiffany? Um, no. I didn't say anything to him. You didn't? Oh, I see. Well, good. I'm pleased to hear that. In that case, would you be a darling and tell him you don't want to meet her yet? His whiny is really starting to bug me, and I think that would shut him up for a while. What? Why would I do that? I've already told you how excited I am to meet her, and if it's not too much trouble for you, I'd really appreciate if you'd let me. No, it's too much trouble, and it's simply not happening. To be completely honest with you, I have absolutely no intention of letting you meet Elsa. Not now, not ever. Really? Duh, think about it. You haven't seen her since she was born. I thought you'd have taken the hint already. But you're clearly not the sharpest tool in the box, are ya? Indigo, I, I don't understand. Did I do something to upset you? If I did, I'm sorry. I mean it. If I did something to bring this on or to cause you inconvenience, just let me know and I'll apologize. Your existence itself is inconvenient. Excuse me? To put it bluntly, you're a scruffy, unsightly mess of a human being. I'm not particularly happy about having to debase myself by associating with you in the first place. And believe me, we wouldn't have anything to do with each other if I hadn't married your brother. You and me live in different worlds. Wow, is that really what you've thought of me this whole time? <laughs> Obviously. If you haven't realized that by now, your IQ must be even lower than the hourly wage from that poxy cleaning job of yours. I mean, really? A cleaner? In my family? Imagine my shock to hear that my husband, a key executive at one of America's most prestigious companies, is related to someone who mops floors for a living. <laughs> 
Maybe it has something to do with your parents dying early, but it really is tragic. And come on, is it any wonder you still haven't managed to bag yourself a man when you dress in those raggedy-ass clothes all the time? You look homeless. I can smell poverty from a mile off, and believe me, I knew you were broke the moment we met. Oh, I know things have never been great between us, but I was really hoping this birth could be an opportunity for me and you to finally start getting along. It looks like I was overly optimistic. How about instead of wishing for the impossible, you start wishing for some money so you won't be such a poor, pathetic loser anymore? Oh wait, that's impossible too. <laughs> the only reason I let you cook and do the shopping for us is because my own parents weren't around. But I'm finally getting used to looking after Elsa, and my parents are here to help out now. You served your purpose, and I have no use for you anymore. I see. Great. I take it we have an understanding now? I don't want a poverty-stricken old hag like you getting her germs on my precious daughter. I have zero intention of ever letting you meet her. Stay away from my daughter, and that means forever. Can you imagine how horrific it would be if she got infected by your dirty, poor people germs? Ugh, I feel sick just thinking about it. I've heard enough. I understand how you feel about me now. Just wow. It's one thing to dislike someone, but you really don't hold back, do you? Make sure you don't forget what you just said. Forget? Impossible. These are more than just words. These are visceral feelings of disgust that permeate the core of my very being. In any case, it's all irrelevant now, because I'm cutting you out of our lives. I see. I'll think of you as nothing but a stranger I have nothing to do with from now on then. Yippee! Please do! Oh, one last thing. Make sure you explain this to your brother exactly as it happened. That you thought it best to voluntarily remove yourself from our lives because you're a worthless, floor-mopping loser with no redeeming qualities. Make sure you don't do anything to jeopardize the happiness of mine and Robert's happy family, okay, mop girl? Anyway, better get back to work. Those floors aren't gonna clean themselves. Hey sis, it's been a while. It's me, Indigo. What do you want? And sis, really? Me and you are most definitely not sisters. Oh, don't be so cold. You're the one who said all of that stuff to me and cut me out of your life. Don't ever call me sis again. Tiffany is just fine. Okay, well, Tiffany, the reason I messaged you is because there is a favor I wanted to ask you. Is that so? You probably already know, but Robert's company went bankrupt. Yes, I know. Now, I don't mind if it's just for a little while, but would you mind helping us out? We could really use some support right now. Me? Why on earth would you ask me for help? Besides, how could a worthless floor-mopping loser with no redeeming qualities like me possibly help you? My brother told me about how you recently got promoted to an executive role at your company. I was convinced you were only working at that corporate tower block as a lowly part-time cleaner or something. I do work in the cleaning industry, and I do work in that tower block, so you're not totally off the mark. I'm sorry, I've treated you so unfairly. I also found out recently that you contributed over half the funds for mine and Robert's lavish Barbados wedding. I had no idea, I swear. How would you? I never told you. It's not like I did it because I expected anything in return. I'm so sorry for everything I said back then. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. You were always there when I needed you back when I was pregnant. You did so much for me. I can't believe I behaved the way I did in spite of all that. I didn't even let you meet your niece. From the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. It's all ancient history now. Move on. Does that mean you forgive me? Why would I do that? Robert told me that he begged and pleaded with you, but you refused to help us. What am I supposed to do? We have a family and a young daughter to think about, and our finances are at rock bottom. Things are so bad, he's having to scour the job sites for low-paid grunt work just to keep food on the table. He's currently in talks with a guy about a night shift position at a fish factory. That's great. I'm really pleased for you both. The lengths he's willing to go to to provide for his family are truly admirable. It's not great at all! A fish factory? Ew! My husband is above that kind of work. I just know he'll find work at another major company before long. All we need is a little bumper cash to keep us going until he does. Please? 
I'm begging you. Why would you beg for money from a stranger? You and your brother are hardly strangers. He's your family. Yeah, and he's already more or less filled me in on the situation. He told me about how despite the company going bankrupt being an enormous blow, he at least felt some peace of mind knowing he had some savings put away. Or at least, he did until he found out you spent every last cent of them behind his back. So while my brother may not be in the best of situations right now, yours is a damn sight worse. I'm sorry. There were just so many things I needed. A hundred dollars here, a few hundred more there. Before I knew it, the account was emptied. Things you needed? Like what? It always seemed to me like you were living at large ever since you two got married. Even when it came to clothes for Elsa, for some strange reason, you always had to go out of your way to get the most expensive brands possible. Not only that, but I heard you were spotted knocking back expensive bottles of wine on a park bench not long after your parents came to stay with you. Let me guess, you paid for those with Robert's savings too? I couldn't drink at all while I was pregnant. Does letting off some steam suddenly make me a bad person? I am human, you know. Oh, don't misunderstand me here. I'm not calling you a bad person for that. I understand that being a parent and giving birth can't be easy. But spending every last cent of your husband's savings behind his back is a different matter. Was it so hard just to get by on the money my brother was giving you? Well, it might have been possible if I knew we'd have to tighten our belts like this, but we were both blindsided by his company going bankrupt. Even so, there's no excuse for emptying his savings account without permission like that. I promise I'll never do anything like this again. You won't? I think the word you're looking for is can't. You have no money left, remember? Robert said we can't even afford to keep up the payments on the mortgage anymore. He says I'm gonna have to move back in with my parents for a little while. My brother's doing his best right now to undo the damage you've done to ensure you don't lose everything he worked so hard for by scraping together some semblance of a living. Why should I have to pick up the pieces of the mess you made? Don't you think begging me for money like this undermines your husband's efforts? He doesn't need to try this hard. If you just gave us a little something to help us get by until he finds a respectable job, we could carry on living like we were without Robert having to come home soaked in fish juice every morning. You seem to be under the tragically deluded impression that your misfortune-filled lives have anything to do with me. If you're going to beg, why not stop wasting your time with me and get on your knees in front of mommy and daddy? My parents are hardly rich. Then do what my brother says, and help out with the finances by going to live with them. If you really want things to improve, that's the best thing you can do. Look, Tiffany, I understand why you don't want to forgive me. But Robert and Elsa are your family, flesh and blood. That's why I'm begging you, please. Please lend us a helping hand and pull us out of this big, deep, dark hole we're living in. How about getting a job yourself instead of pestering me for money? Ugh, I can't do that. I have Elsa to look after. Look, I get it. Juggling a job with raising a little girl is never going to be easy. But there are so many women who pull it off somehow in spite of that. Difficult doesn't mean impossible. Besides, you're hardly in a position to be picky right now. I think it could actually do you some good to start working again. It's not as easy as you make it sound. Plus, do you know how hard making me work would be on Robert and Elsa? Why should they suffer? They've done nothing wrong. Tiffany, I'm begging you here. I wish the best for her, really I do. But it's hard for me to feel any overwhelming feelings of love or sympathy for a niece I've never even met. My brother may not have done anything wrong morally, but he sure made the most moronic mistake of his life when he chose to marry you, and it's important he learns his lesson without me bailing him out. None of you are my problem. Oh my god, you're horrible! How could you do this to us? They're your family! You choosing to cut me out of your lives? My brother choosing to marry you? You both made these decisions yourselves. Now listen to me. Even if I did want to help my family, the issue here is that helping them would also mean helping you. Do you really think I have any interest in helping someone who banned me from seeing my own niece? Who said all those horrible, malicious things to me before kicking me out of your lives? I know what I did was wrong and I am so, so sorry. You could apologize a million times over and it still wouldn't make me any more likely to open my purse. You know, I'm glad you messaged me actually. 
I have been thinking of making it clear to my brother what actually happened between me and you for a while now. A message? What is it? That I want nothing more to do with you for as long as I live. I've been kicking the can down the road by coming up with half-baked excuses like being too busy with work or having social engagements every time he came asking for help. But I realized that might give him the false impression that I might actually be willing to help out if I had the time, and I don't want to lead him on, especially without him even understanding why. Please rethink this, Tiffany. At the very least, can't it wait a little while? I can't tell him that with everything that's going on right now. That's the last bombshell he needs blowing up in his face. Can't you see how sorry I am? Read through the chat again, I apologize. I, I don't remember how many times, but it was a lot. You said it yourself. What happened back then is ancient history now, so can't we just let bygones be bygones? I won't beg you for help anymore. You guys struggling financially has nothing to do with me. Our family has already suffered enough, please don't inflict any more damage. I'm not sure if we can even take any more. I'm begging you. I don't know if our marriage is strong enough to survive him finding out about how I acted towards you back then. Me? Inflict more damage? Ha! <laughs> The only one responsible for destroying your family is you. Yes, you're so right. I accept it. Fully, completely, and absolutely. We're in this mess because of me and me alone. I'm so, so sorry. If this was a close family member begging me for help, maybe I'd feel some kind of obligation. As it is, I think I'll look after my own interests just like you always did back then. We are strangers after all, you know. No amount of begging or pleading will ever change that. You and me live in different worlds. Never speak to me again. Not long after that, I told my brother Robert everything about how horribly his wife used to treat me. I knew it would be a shock for him, and I knew that was the last thing he needed with everything else he had on his plate. But at the same time, he had the right to know what the woman he married was really like, and I had no obligation to continue putting up with her persistent, whiny begging. I think my brother finally understood why I'd been so blunt and distant with him all this time. It's hard to say she went willingly, but he told me that he eventually succeeded in getting Indigo to move back in with her parents. She took Elsa with her. He did a lot of soul-searching while living separately from his family and working his butt off to undo the damages his wife had done to their finances. It wasn't an easy decision, but he came to the conclusion that divorce wasn't an option now that they had Elsa to think about, and he decided to try and rebuild things. Not long after Robert found out, Indigo's parents were also informed of the abhorrent way she treated me, and how she emptied her husband's savings account behind his back. They were furious, and her quality of life back home with her parents hit rock bottom in an instant when they lost their tempers and imposed all kinds of crazy restrictions on her. Imagine being grounded as a fully grown woman. I don't know if it was due to their redisciplining of their daughter, but after Robert finally found a new job and they started living together again, he said it was like she was a different person. Gone were the days of frivolous spending and arrogantly swaggering around like she owned the place, now, she was diligent, hardworking, and humble. Two years later, Indigo finally brought Elsa to meet me for the first time. She apologized to me again, but unlike before, I don't think it was because she wanted my money. This time, it genuinely felt like she was apologizing because she had thought long and hard about the way she'd behaved, and was remorseful from the bottom of her heart. As for me, I already told her what I thought of her for the way she treated me back then. I'd moved on, and I felt serene and free of anger. I don't know if we'll ever be best friends, but as my sister-in-law, I at least want us to be on friendly terms. I fully accepted her apology. You may be wondering how my long-awaited meet with my niece went. I can tell you she is one seriously cute kid. She's so lovely, I actually kinda regretted not helping him out back then. Only a little, though. I don't feel an ounce of sympathy for what Indigo went through as a result of her actions. But I get the genuine impression that her and Robert are really doing everything they can to build a happy home for Elsa now. And you know what? If they're ever in trouble again, I think I might just lend an ear. Maybe I'm being naive, but Elsa and Robert are my family, and I want to be there for them if they need me. Having grown slightly closer than strangers once more, I wanted to be there to watch over them in place of our mom and dad. 